box. Hello there, it's me again, Blurbox Guy. So I'm just gonna dive into this one. This is a character design tutorial where I'm gonna design some stuff for an animation I wanna do. This is gonna be a three part series where I cover character design, storyboarding and animation. And in the end, I have a cool little cartoon I can show you guys. So yeah, let's jump into it. So, in character design, shape language plays a crucial role in defining the visual identity and personality of a character. Character designers, that's us, use specific shapes to convey a certain feeling about how a character should be felt when it's on screen. So a squarish kind of character elicits a sort of sturdy, strong, reliable feeling. Like Mr. Incredible or Patcher from The Emperor's New Groove. That's a great movie. And if a character is circular, they're soft, peaceful, harmless, and just sort of jolly old people. <laughs> So examples of that would be Russell from Up and that guy from Ratatouille. What's his name? What is his name? Remy. His name's Remy. And lastly, we have triangular shaped characters that are based yeah, around triangles. They are sharp, directional, dangerous, and unpredictable. So think the Joker or a coup from Samurai Jack. Now you can take these shapes and apply multiple different shapes to the same character. So you can have a character who, you can have a character who has sharp pointy bits and pieces with an overall squarish sort of solid feeling. And I'm thinking someone like Batman from Bruce Timm's Batman animated series. You can say Batman is solid and strong and reliable, which he is. He's also mysterious and slightly unpredictable, which is alluded to with the pointy triangular features. And if you are designing multiple characters as a duo or a trio, it's always more interesting to have the characters having complementary shapes and the personality to go with those shapes. Okay, and after all that waffle, I'm going to start designing some characters. Let's do it. Okay, so there's a bunch of other stuff that goes into character design, but I just went over one of the staples for me. Uh, there's also stuff like shape definition and color, and there's also expressions and stuff like that, but um, I just covered shape language real quick. So I will get into color and that kind of stuff later on, but for this character, the first thing I'm going to do is she is a more circular, rounded character. She's going to be fighting a bad guy. There's gonna be a sword fight, there's gonna be a fist fight, and I think there might be a gun, I don't know yet. But I'm gonna make her kind of round. She is the main character, she is the hero. Um, I'm also gonna give her quite squarish legs, and that will give her sort of solidity and strength so she can take on the bad guy. And she was going to be fighting a bunch of zombies, so I gave her a cricket bat in the beginning. I changed it from a zombie to a more just regular bad guy. Um, he does look pretty cool though. So I end up changing the cricket bat to a sword later on. Um, but what I'm doing right now is I'm just smashing out a couple of designs. I want her, she's gonna be like a schoolgirl kind of thing, kind of badass schoolgirl. I just want to make her eyes quite big because she's, um, you know, kind of sweet, I guess. She is, she's a tough cookie underneath. And having large eyes is useful to portray emotion and innocence. Uh, bad guys usually have squinty, pointy eyes, and the good guy protagonist usually has bigger eyes. So I gave you my first mega rule of designing characters and that's shape. Secondly, for me, because I'm an animator and I have to animate these bloody things, a lack of details or, or applying details in a smart kind of way. In animation, every time there's a line drawn in the design, you have to reanimate that line thousands and thousands of times. And that also applies to digital animation. I used to think that having lots of details in the design meant that I was a good design. I think because it's kind of fun to draw little folds and bits and little buckles and like little tassel bits hanging off your character. I used to think that was a good design until I had to animate. Check out these designs. This is something I drew years ago. I'm talking years and years, maybe like 10 years ago. Ignore the fact that they're terribly ugly and it's there's, they're really bad designs. But can you imagine animating these two characters with all their little bits and details and it'd be an utter nightmare. So keep it simple, kids. So I moved on to the second character. I went for a bigger squarer shape and I'm gonna give him slightly pointed features just to make him more intimidating. This guy I really struggled with because I wasn't sure, like originally he was gonna be a big hulking robot guy and it just didn't work for me. Like he was too big, too big to take on the, too big to take on Daisy. So it, it, it took me a while to figure out exactly why it wasn't working. 
So I went through multiple designs of the bad guy. Um, as you can see here, I threw in Daisy next to him just to give a size comparison. I think I do um, size her up a little bit. So I'm going to call her Mr. Z because that's all I can think of. So Daisy and Mr. Z. So yeah, I go through a few designs. So because he's very square and blocky, it's going to contrast nicely with Daisy. So that's why I chose this shape. And when it comes to colors, I'm also going to give him a reddish brownish kind of color. But I'll get into colors in a bit. Okay, moving on. So I had some detail just to see how it's going to look and I'm not happy with it. <laughs> Guys, I'm not happy with this because it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. The big hulking robots, they kind of look like Attack of the Clone robots, which I'm not okay with. So I'll go back to the drawer board. Now I quite like the head bit, that's the only part I like. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to work with this. Maybe if I do someone more human-like, but I still want this to be a robot. So looking at the head shape, I'm thinking maybe I can have him like, a, maybe I can have a guy wear a gas mask or something like that. Gas masks have always given me a sort of creepy vibe, so I figured this would work. I'm also going to put a hose in there. Um, I don't know if that is, that's not typical of modern day gas masks. So I'm going to have to look at reference. Now, word of warning, when you're referencing anything, when you're referencing anything on the internet, we all know the internet's a weird place, so I googled gas masks and I was getting some weird BDSM stuff. <laughs> I don't know, the world's a weird place, it's full of weird people, but I want to but I want to use this for a design. I quite like it, it's kind of old and weird, and um, let's go with something like that. Not that! <laughs> so, I'm feeling much better about this. I have a sort of direction I need to go. This is where the internet's really good because back in the day, I'm sure you would have had to, if you want a reference for something, you would have maybe like an encyclopedia of just pictures and reference and different things. You would have took pictures of stuff, found it in magazines, but now with the internet, it's so easy. You can just search it like that. So this guy's gonna be a bit more triangular. He's, he's gonna be a bit more pointy, maybe like Batman or Samurai Jack or something like that. He's gonna have some, he's gonna have some edge to him. And I want to make his sword not quite a samurai sword, although I don't know, I kind of flip flop back and forth and I haven't quite figured that out yet. This feels like it's going in a better direction. Okay. Okay, so this is feeling much better. He still feels a little bit too kind of Darth Vader-y, so I'm not quite psyched about this yet, but I'm getting there. So let's give this another shot. I've, I'm going to use this as a sort of base, but let's give it one more go. So at this point I decided I'm going to make him more human-like. He's going to be maybe like an android, but he's going to have less of those weird details that have kind of robot bits and pieces. And he's also going to have a suit or a suit tie kind of thing. So like I was saying before, I want simple shapes for this character. The legs and the arms and the torso are just going to be nice, simple shapes. Nothing crazy with the details. So I think something like Samurai Jack, that idea of just like shape 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 now i love the designs from gendy tartoski because they're very simple very straightforward and and it's very obvious which character you're looking at now i think i've gone over shape and that kind of stuff enough i've kind of drilled it in and it's getting kind of boring so i'm going to talk about color now okay moving on okay so color theory is really important for setting the feeling and tone of your characters in your cartoons. So whenever I'm designing characters, I do mess around with color. It's a great way to suggest the tone of your character and what the audience should feel about them. So with Daisy here, Daisy and Mr. Z, I went for two color palettes here that are kind of opposite. I have Daisy as a more cool kind of purpley bluish and I have Mr. Z as a more orangey kind of earthy color more on the reddish side so Daisy is a cooler color because she is you know a calm kind of character but also she but she has a hint of red in there just because you know she, blue and red make a purplish color so I kind of gave her that tone because that's what she is she's slightly fiery a ninja warrior <laughs> And Mr. Z is, he's a, he's got the reddish tone to him because he is the bad guy. These are useful because they are contrasting colors. What I'm getting at is that you can tell them apart. So it's very useful when they're fighting, you know who's who. And also you can tell at a glance what their personalities are like. So a cool kind of character against someone who's a bit more fiery. Okay. I think I nailed it. <laughs> Not really, but we'll go with that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about expressions briefly and then I'm going to let this play out. With expressions, I will lay down uh, with a broad brush, shape and silhouette. And that's what I'm working on mainly to get a pose that is dynamic with a nice line of action. Something that you can read that is full of energy. That's the kind of stuff I like. And for this cartoon, it's going to be a lot of that stuff. So that's what I'll be focusing on. And then I'll throw a line on top and 
call it a day. For some of these poses, just before I go, for some of these poses I did use reference, and for this video I didn't include Mr. Zed's expressions. If you want to see that, you should go check out my Patreon. Two bucks a month. Cheers.
Okay, so we come to the end here. Thanks for watching. I am working on the storyboards next. I'm probably just gonna do the storyboards in Toon Boom. We'll see how that goes. Here's what Daisy looks like all cleaned up in a couple of poses and I added some tone there. And here's what Mr. Z looks like as well, all toned up and with some poses. I have a Patreon if you want to check that out. It's two bucks a month. Uh, I post stuff on there. We can have a chat and I also post all the videos on there ad free and a couple of bonus clips. Check out my Instagram as well. Links in the description below. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.